Oh, there's my joke. All right. So um, you've all heard the chat GBT AI. I'm sure everybody's familiar with it. Maybe they haven't tried to play with it. And I'm sure people have here and maybe some haven't. But, um, you know, what's the um, the end game here of everything of why this is such a big deal? Why? Because, I mean, everybody can look at it. I'm just starting here as a, a different way from speaking with a lot of people into it, like myself. Um, is it, it does it save you time? Yes. Does it give you good ideas? Yes. Um, does it uh, um, help you marketing, market and sell your business if you need be? Yes. Um, is it, you know, the end all of everything? No, you still need the human mindset and the strategy, right? You know, obviously it can do great research and everything, whether you, you know, hopefully you agree with it, right? They're always working on that. But um, the bottom line, though, is you need to have, you know, your own brand involved with it and your personality, if need be, and other things. And we'll show samples of that, of what it can do. But um, I just wanted to start off with that. It's, um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great tool, but it's not the only tool, right? So, um, so I wanted to do that. Zoe let me show a presentation, which I have here. I did it a couple months ago, but I'll just, everybody will get it. Just some, a few technical things here, then we'll get to the fun. Um, let's see here. I called it, um, I'm Paul Mosenson, if anybody doesn't know me, by the way. Um, New Spark Consulting, um, digital marketing company and lead generator. Um, let's see. So yeah, I built this myself. Um, I could have had ChatGBT write this, but actually maybe I did, actually. Um, but anyway, um, you know, it, it's, you know, what it is, is basically, it's a, it's a tool that actually represents a, a concept called like generative AI, which is basically all this technology out there that learns the internet and gets data and then answers questions in real, almost real time in, in, in real language. So it's pretty amazing how it goes back and, and finds information. I know it's not unlike, you know, the old days of, you know, Alexa, you know, you ask it a question, right? That's sort of, comes up just like that, but it's a lot more detailed with options and everything. It saves a lot of time. Um, we won't go through the detail in here right now, but you know, it just sources the internet basically. It actually ends in, I think they have to update it. Actually, the research ends in 2021, but there's other ways to get around that. Um, yeah, there is concern over um, you know, the um how it answers, like I said data to 2021 is it totally accurate, but that's you to use it and make sure that it's sourced properly. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do with it. You know, the like in create eBooks, I'll show you a sample of that. Um, you know, here's an example of uh, titles as like prompts. And basically you've heard the word prompt and a prompt is basically, you know, a clue that you're giving the tool to come up with an answer and how it's going to, um, you know, present that answer to you and show samples of that. You know, it can do presentations, it could write slides, you know, all based on what you wanted to say. You can always tweak it, but it just gives you the uh, initial, um, you know, strategy if you're going to do a presentation and how you want to organize it. Um, there's email. Here's another example, email subject lines, right? Um, you know, these are getting examples of uh, prompts that you go into your business, but you know, there's, I mean, this is basically email subject lines anyway, but you can use ChatGBT to um, come up with some creative ones if you need to. You know, writing email copy, you know, trying to get attendance at events. I mean, you know, talk to clients, that's yourself, reminders for events, things like that. And we'll show samples of that too. It's probably most um, popular way to use it with is email copy and things like that. Um, you know, if you under, you want to understand your target audience a little more, you think you know them, but maybe you can ask the tool um, about their other personas and what problems they have at a company, what pain points they have, and you could research all of that, um, and what trigger events prospects use to find businesses and things like that. Cold email outreach. Um, you know, again, this is like an example format of prompts you could put into um, ChatGPT to come up with some answers. I might need stats. I want a specific problem. You know, I need a message to overcome a sales objection. 
right? And how do I do that with a salesperson? You know, give me like five sales objections to a certain product, right? Um, personalizing messaging and, and even, even include a call to action in the messages. This is something off my website. I won't, it's on the website, but this is actually, I wrote this um, as an example of a, uh, my own way of showing example prompts with email writing. And um, that is a, uh, um, you know, where you focus on like the message first, what do you want to show in your email? The, um, what's the subject of the email? Um, write it as you're the seller and the prospect is the buyer because you, know, you want to give as much information as possible. Um, then you can go through the formats. You know, how do you want it to be seen? You can experiment with it um, you know, with subject lines. and Maybe I want three, three paragraphs and five bullet points, or maybe I want five bullet, you know, the other way around, you can do mix up paragraph. If you don't like to show bullet points, you can show paragraphs. I mean, you're basically giving it a format, you know, three paragraphs, and include the last paragraph, a call to action to my website, and it'll do that for you. Um, all those kinds of things. The style is always interesting too. We can experiment with that as well as how you wanted to um, how you wanted to communicate, right? You know, we're, you know, these are examples here. It's all is a dramatic, powerful message, strong emotions in the copy. You know, or maybe you want um, just base, keep it objective and focused, but include facts and figures and numbers. Um, maybe you want to make it humorous, you know, and but but persuasive at the same time. So maybe include a satire or puns in the copy, right? Um, write motivational. Make the reader feel guilty if he or she doesn't take action. You know, you know logical. You know, industry stats again. Um, products benefits. All these kinds of things you can experiment with and with kinds of like email copy for if you're doing cold or follow-up emails with clients. So, and that's it. And then you can also do songs and poems and limericks and everything else too, by the way, if you wanted to do that. <laughs> we could maybe show that if we have time. But that's the beginning here. So, um, so that's it. So, Zoe, how do you want to proceed here? You want me to show some things or? Well, is there anyone who's brave enough to volunteer? I see Joe's hand is raised. So maybe we can start with Joe and then work from there. Sure. So, um, so we do this, I guess we do it verbally. Um, yeah, sure. So, so my company. Uh, and I'll, and Apple, yeah. Hello. Oh, by the way, before we get started here, um, I want to give you some quick updates. I'm sorry. Um, I pay for chat GBT number four, by the way. And so it's $20 a month and gives you a lot more to do. Um, you know, there's, you can do, um, custom instructions, personalization, uh, instead of just general with the, uh, when you're paying. So here's an example of mine, which is based on, uh, I think I typed this in here. I keep it on a document because for clients, I'll take it out and put a client's persona in. It's basically how you want, um, chat GBT to answer questions. So for this example, you know, there's two questions here. What would you like? Chat GB to know about you to provide better responses so it doesn't look generic. So I tell you who I am and what I do. And how would you like it to respond? Again, you can change this. I just wrote here. Mix of formal and casual, but compelling. I mean, I, I experiment with words. You can do anything you want. Show good insights, focus on paragraphs, but just a few bullet points. Give insightful opinions on facts where necessary, because you don't want to be all factual. I want to give opinions. Talk about how strategic and tactical I am to produce results, include and rotate these phrases. Again, this is how you personalize something. In by experience, based on my client work. Do you get all this? So it's basically, you, you're personalizing it, you know, with different ways to showcase the facts, but make it a little more your content with some personality. And, and that's, so there's a free version and a paid version? Yes. Levels of paid versions? Or yes, just... this part's the paid version. Because the free version, again, will be more generic in the in the messaging. I mean, you can still do all the prompts and everything, but it won't go to the more specific of your own persona that you want to put in the messaging. Gotcha. 
Yeah, and then you can turn it off if you want to make it generic. I can turn it on and off. Right now I have it on. So you'll see how that works. But now the other thing it does for the advanced version, it's a beta test of um of a bunch of plugins. Now they used to list the plugins, but um I don't know why they're not here, but um, but you can oh here we go. Let's see. What the plugins do is uh the ones I picked. I don't know if you can see the screen is uh there's Zapier plugin. Oh, there's a plugin store for more things. Um oh that's interesting. They took one away. Um you can it reads a PDF and can summarize that. Um you can see all these different plugins you get. The one that I like is uh now where to go. Oh, they have a new one, Link Analyzer. Oh, they, so they, they keep updating this stuff and keep tweaking it. Well, the point of the matter is, is it could take all these different plugins now because people are, it's like WordPress, they're building plugins for this. So you can uh, um, do different things with it. So that's kind of a new thing, news roundups. I haven't played with this stuff yet. So, um, but I just use that as a keyword because it was ways to, you know, in the early with 3.5, it doesn't read links. You know, if you wanted to say, here, read this link and rewrite the copy from this other blog to make it look like your, your own, right? Um, but apparently there's a lot more here than, I mean, they're, they're updating this all the time. So um, so that's interesting. Okay. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that little introduction. And then here's, a, here's one more tease for everybody, and there'll be a few more later, is I've been tweaking an ebook for a client. Now, don't get me wrong here. I still do some stuff here, but this is an ebook from a sales organization that's uh, mostly written by ChatGBT with some of my customized prompts as the client. And, um, you know, so, I mean, I came up with the headline, but this image is uh, AI generated. Do you see it? Because <laughs> I wanted to show a um, an anguished, you know, sales, like a CEO who can't manage a sales team, he needs to outsource sales. Right. So you just grab their attention and things like that. So most, I mean, a lot of the copy is chat GBT, but it's all based on my prompts and things like that. So it's an ebook, you know, for lead generation. I think it's pretty good. Anyway, um, so that's a little tease. <laughs> Paul, Taylor says, uh, has a question before sure. we. Yeah, Paul, uh, good stuff here. And as we all know, nobody can predict the future. But the question I have is what roadblocks are ahead? for us in the next 12 to 24 months that might limit access to chat GBT in its current form. What's the FCC going to be doing? China, as you probably know, just passed uh, some new rules uh, regulating the technology and kind of what's in store for us? What things should we be looking at uh, going forward as it relates to this technology, which is fabulous, but it's a, it's a little scary where we're, where we're heading and what it's going to look like down the road versus where it is today. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it's hard to say, right? Because I'm not yeah, you know, yeah. keeping up. But the only thing I can think of is, um, you know, copyright stuff and make sure it, you know, it does things in its own words that we're not um, stealing anything, right? Um, like you said, so I don't know. I mean, I think you just have to be careful there. But it, I mean, the tool is supposed to take information and write it in its own way, right? Um, so I have to see where that goes. I mean, it's always going to evolve. I mean, ChatGBD5 is coming out soon, and there's going to be a lot of more audio prompts like a lot of tools have. So you can, you know, may maybe like download a, an audio script or something, you know, that kind of thing. But um, but it's hard to say. I mean, I, the only thing that people get nervous about is, I mean, for me, like, I like the technology. I think it's unique, but like anything, it might become second nature like everybody's doing it right so not as compelling anymore right but um but it's all about it's still about you know utilizing it the right way testing and um you know does a prospect get it um you know to engage somebody right with messaging that listen even if you write white papers in the past it's not like I mean, you have a writer with their own style, but what's the writer do? They do research. They find articles on the internet and try to rewrite it. You know, they have, I mean, that's like before this stuff. I mean, that's what, it's almost like this is a research tool, but, you know, and then this is the writer and then you put some personality in it, like you'd hire any writer and they're doing the research. So, 
that's where writers get worried about it, right? Because they worry about jobs and less work for them because yeah. they're doing this, and those kinds of things. But, you know, it's just got to be like how it's evolving, right? Like I'm sure back in the old days when stock photo sites came out that, oh, the photographers couldn't be able to do photography anymore because now they're all on Getty and Shutterstock and all these, right? But they survive, you know, so. But you know, Paul, one, one thing I heard about what the comment you just made Yes, there could be a loss of jobs, but they're going to be creation of new jobs out there as a result of this as well. So it could be somewhat of a trade-off. Nobody knows, again, the future, but that's been brought up in conversation. Yeah. So I, I see Chase has his hand raised. I don't know if you're commenting on this. Maybe we can get one more comment, but I'd love to also just get into some examples because this is more of like a, uh, this is more meant to be hands-on with the, but go for it, Chase, if you have a comment. Sure. Yeah, just a, just a comment, follow up on what Taylor's saying here. So, so the fears that I'm seeing around this and, and the way that I'm anticipating it being used to open jobs, um, we're already seeing this. So Elon Musk's um, previous partner, the musician Grimes, um, she's now putting out songs and giving 50% royalties to people who use ChatGPT to create a likeness of her voice and just create a new song. So she's using this to generate ideas to see what she wants to put on her own album, and she's already made millions from it. Similarly, senators in the uh, technology committee committee have had fears about how 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 about people using this to generate voices. And one of the concerns was, well, well, what if? And I was able to do this. Uh, the senator said, "What if we created the voice of Zelensky, who was." Um, <laughs> <laughs> surrendering to Vladimir Putin's leadership and created a recording of that. So there's all sorts of ethical, new, new ethical yeah. considerations yeah. and challenges that are going to be around the job world. And even the, the chief, uh, the chief executive of ChatGPT came out and said, it must be regulated. It needs to be regulated. So it's good insights, Taylor. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for bringing that good. up. Yeah, I want to see the mechanism because you identified you know, three elements of uh, describing your project in that in that chart, right? Format, style, content. I'm 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 just yeah. curious. Well, let's do we're... this. Like, what's um? Here's an example. Um, can we use Joe's right. problem that he's trying to solve, or can we? Yeah, have... let's start with what's, Joe. Who's your target audience, and what problem do they have? Let's start there. So, <clears throat> my company, Cloud Theta, is, is Cloud Theta. I am uh, an an independent sales consultant for over 300 different technology companies. Most of them I'll never do business with, but that's another subject. Um, so with our partners, um, we provide a pretty vast array of products and services, including internet connectivity, unified communications, call center solutions as a service, um, managed cloud-based uh, infrastructure like Azure-based servers and workstations. But right now, because of the, I guess, exponential increase in um, phishing attacks and, um, you know, just compromises of, of, of emails and so forth. Uh, my focus is on managed security, specifically um, SOC as a service, systems and organizational controls as a service, uh, which includes SIEM, um, system incident and event management, uh, security awareness training, et cetera. So uh, we know or we think that the target is uh, highly regulated, uh, compliance-driven businesses that need these services. And so my challenge is to identify the businesses that have needs for these services, top level being SOC as a service, right? identify who the decision makers are for buying that service and software product, et cetera. Um, identify intent. Um, in other words, who intends to make a purchase in the near future? Um, create emails uh, that have the right language, length, et cetera, uh, to make buyers uh, interested and then decide the best way to communicate with them, verbally, email, et cetera. I mean, that's a big question. Some of the audience it, it could help with, but um, we have to see. I mean, there's a lot of technical things here, but 
what I want to do is like. I think you can pick a couple of key words out, right? Yeah, like yeah. S- systems and organizational controls. Scene, security awareness, and um. So if, if, I if mean, you, so and buyers of those services and products. So um. No. Let's let's do this. Uh, what's the what's the name of the term you used? Let's see if it knows it first. Um, SOC, S-O-C, as a service, or sometimes abbreviated capital S, capital O, capital C, small A, small A, capital S. No, it's not doing, it's not supposed to do the, maybe it's trying to look something up. That's weird. It's not. Uh... Try, try system and organization start controls. So then the next question would be, Oh, I should get rid of my personalization. So <laughs> the next question would be what businesses buy this service? Or if you wanted to get more specific, what businesses in the Philadelphia area buy this well, service? Well, oh let's pick the industry first. Let's see if that works. Because it'll take what you learned what before and it'll like update it. So it's not like you're starting over here. So yeah, I'm coming up. There you go. Yep. Healthcare. Yeah. So far, that makes total sense. So this is like doing research. So you can target. This is an example of what you can do with it. Obviously, a lot of ca- categories here. Again, we're just doing like some generic stuff here. But really, if you want to have um um uh, it still remembers my uh we have to start it still remembers my uh doesn't matter though you get the idea um then we can go into something like um write an email um actually i'm gonna probably do this on a new chat write an email towards executives at financial institutions. By the way, if you spell something wrong, it'll figure it out. <laughs> On why they should consider, is it buying or upgrading, you think, in this? Uh, it would it would probably be it would probably be buying the the managed service. I mean you can customize these emails again. This is just the first. Yeah, right. sure. You scrape scrape it off and, and put your own words in there. Yeah, because then I mean this is kind of like generic, but it's good information, right? But you can almost even treat it as like a like a, a website page too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or a landing page where you could say, learn more about our solutions. Here's a forum, right? I mean, you can do all those kinds of things with it. Um at this point. Mr. Chat is making an email that's way too long for somebody to read as a call. Well, yeah, but you know, but then what happens is if you think it's too long um, and you want to do an ongoing message, right? Again, this is just the first round, right? You can certainly say, um, watch this. You can say like, um, you can do the same thing. Um, Focus only on regulatory compliance. You take your generic one that you learned and say, well, let's focus on, uh, again, you can customize all this, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It may end up being the same length, but at least it gives you more detail, right? Of um, Let's see how far it goes with this one category. Again, this is written as you're the vendor. So it says- Joe, one, one thing that I've done with this, Joe, is I allow it to populate something generic like this, and then I'll simplify it. And I'll, look, I'll look at those bolded headlines that it gives me, and I'll condense it down to two or three solid points that I want to communicate. And right. this, it just kind of gives me a general direction of where to go, and then I have to simplify it. It, it doesn't quite do that for me yet. So Chase, you are, you are actually using- chat GPT for this application of marketing and sales? I've played around with it. Yeah. Some of my clients will use it. 
mostly like what Paul said, we're using it to generate ideas for headlines and type of growth strategies for marketing to bring new people into our audience. The, um, the sequential kind of nurture strategies, what this is better at, at least in, in, in my focus in business development, is kind of giving you giving you a rough idea of the sequence of the types of messages you might want to consider writing since with sequential nurture marketing, we don't pop everything into one single communication. Right, right. We sprinkle right. it. So that's how I've seen it differentiated between grow and nurture. Um, like what Paul was saying, mostly in the mostly in the content creation phase or idea generation for, for topics. And then if I want to do something like this and get more detailed in the body, I'll, I'll let it do its thing. And once I'm, once I'm about 70, 80% comfortable that, that I put the right inputs in, then I'll just use it as a guideline to further simplify. Mm -hmm. But I never pop something into a content or an email that ChatGPT has written. I only use it for idea generation. Everybody can so, do it their own way, right? Like I said, with the personalization, it all depends on how you want to use it. Does anybody else want to go and talk about their business? We'll do something different. So Chase, you're in marketing. <clears throat> is, that, is that it? Well, I, I help uh, recovering executives and recovering board members like myself take their services that they're good at and wrap a complete business around it. So marketing is a piece of it. And what I found is ChatGPT and um, I think there's another one we use called Jarvis. Uh, they're, they're not bad at generating ideas. There's Claude, uh, so, there's Jasper. So that's what we're doing. It's a bunch of tools. So. Jasper, that's what it is. Yeah, Jasper. Yeah. Anyway, Paul, thanks for doing that. Sure. There you go. Anybody else want to go since we're interactive here? Sure, we'll go. Um, so I want to uh, create a series of LinkedIn posts with a message and um, you know a graphic. Um, and let's say this. The, the series would be about um, five ways to increase your business uh, market multiple for a future sale. Is that a phrase that people understand, market multiple? It's a common term. All right, let's try that. Multiple of either, right? <laughs> uh, well, the more, well, here's what we'll, we'll, we'll play around with the prompt yeah. a little bit for this exercise. <clears throat> you want to make it like a it depends like, on the industry, whether it's a what's prominent or dominant market multiple of EBITDA, seller discretionary earnings, revenue, gross profit. It really, which one is more important depends on the buyer and the seller. So, um, what's what's the topic? Oh, it just came out of my head. I hadn't written it down. So write a three paragraph. I'm just using as an example. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. LinkedIn post on, on the topic. Uh, top five ways to increase your valuation multiples. Valuation market multiples, plural. plural. Okay, never heard of that, but okay. Change, change it to maybe make a business. Business valuation, let's be, to increase your business valuation uh, market multiples. So, it may be too general. Let's see what we get. Right in a personal and persuasive style. Okay. Let's just see what that does. <clears throat> Friends, I can't because <laughs> you got to make it personal. We'll link it. Uh, I'm going to say in a um, what be the right word for a for Look, general. It, it added some fun little emojis too. Right. So what we got is how to basically build the profitability of your company. Okay, which is not what I was aiming at. But that could be because my instructions were, 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 were too general, right? Um, well, you can always regenerate it, but then you you can put the same message in there, but you might tell it to say remove this point and replace it with this point, and it'll do it. 
I was expecting results that would say, uh, improve your customer diversification and reduce concentration, which is a big risk in a business that uh, lowers your valuation if you're too concentrated. These answers were all about how to make my business more profitable uh, in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. N not, so that's. But again, it's ideas of what it does and you can always, right. you know, go in and redo it or just focus on one of the topics. Right. Yeah. We'll keep refining the mess, the uh, request, the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'd like to see one, an example where it creates a, 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 a graphic. How about this one? Um, I don't really, I don't think it really does that yet, but you know, um, it's, I think it's more wording. I haven't really tried it. I mean, just words. But, but um, there's other, there's other tools that can do that. Uh, how about the graphics are on another tool? But anyway, go ahead. Uh, create a LinkedIn post about the uh, 2Q23 trend in private company business valuations. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me repeat that. Yeah, eventually. We're <laughs> going to make it a little funnier. Write a dramatic um, styled LinkedIn post. Just because we're just having fun here. <laughs> on the um, two, second op. quarter, two, two Q23. It only goes back to 2021 in the research, by the way. So that may not that's, work. That's fine. Uh, trend. But we'll in see. Pri in private company business valuations. See how I made it dramatic? So it added some like nice fun words in there to grab people's yeah, so attention. A, a grander tapestry. Right. That's right. But there's no data. Not really. It, it kind of made it generic. It didn't any data. It just... Yeah. Just talk, but th th these are descriptive paragraphs that I might not think of on my own. Right? That's right, Fred. I'm just curious what what were you um, hoping to get? What what were you looking for? Because then we might be able to tweak the input. Right. Well, I I, I mean I've read other studies, so I know that business valuations have declined in quarter one and quarter two over prior prior years. Um, part of the reason is high interest rates mean uh, buyers are making lower offers because their cost of financing is higher and so they can't offer as much. So that's certainly a big factor in addition to the um, economic uncertainty of a potential recession versus soft landing. Whenever there's uncertainty, there are fewer buyers and when there are fewer, it's back to supply and demand, fewer buyers than uh, you know, values will go down. So, so are you that's looking what I more? Know. Are you looking more for it to spit out the macroeconomic factors that are depressing uh, business valuation, or are you looking more at those business level quarterly KPIs that they would need to satisfy? Well, uh, I guess both are interesting topics, but I'm glad you brought here. brought up the need to refine. Because I wonder if you picked one of those directions, it might give you more insight right. of what you're looking for instead of just the generic mm -hmm. um, content the, post. The other thing I wanted to do here was um, see, you can also take other articles and rewrite it, as I mentioned. Again, Rich is trying to be a little more, you know, interesting for yeah. everybody let's, here. Let's see that. Could you go back to that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Remember, it's not trained in anything before somewhere in 2021. You said that already, Paul. Right, but that's okay. Let's see what You're it right. let's see if it reads it right. We'll find oh, it. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, see, I don't have the plugin that's set up that way because they removed it in the test. So never mind. But you can do that. It was doing it yesterday. They changed but it. Copy paste the content and tell it. Yeah, I was right. gonna ask if you copy you, you copy paste. You, can, the you can do that too. I've done that plenty of times. Well, this is a short one, but that's okay though. We'll just do it anyway. Yeah, that's a good example. Let's see. So there you go. You can rewrite articles too, like that. I do that too every so often. Then I put my personal personalization in there. Then you got like a nice, 
You can even say um, uh, this is an extensive rewrite, longer than the original. I know, right? Um, can we, whenever we rewrite, do you know, Paul, if there's a way that we could use the prompt to say rewrite and summarize into three key bullets or three key points? Yeah, you can do all of that. It'll just, you know, whether they're the right three points is another story, but you can tell it that. Um, Automated ghostwriter. Yeah. You can, I mean, that's, that's the point. It does all those kinds of things. I even tried to do this, by the way, just for a little fun here. Um, I didn't know what I was reading that, about this, but I didn't really, I tried, but I got, just got lost because it kept messing up. I tried to make it write code. I was trying to get a WordPress plugin, believe it or not. And this is a coding thing. It can do that too if you do it the right way. I, it actually showed up, but then it didn't really work too well. But, you know, not that it gets into technical here, but it writes code. <laughs> writes code for a website, writes code for a design, you know? I mean, that was really interesting how I experimented with that. Um, but, um, yeah. You were, I, just for a little fun here, I'm going to show you a couple other things, okay? I know because of time, but um, just because um, these are the kind of things that exist. I created like a landing page on my website with all um, AI tools, right? And a little bit of, uh, I bought a domain, New Spark AI. And then watch this video, it's only like a minute long. Welcome to New Spark AI. As you know, AI has taken business, especially marketing and sales by storm. At New Spark, we have embraced AI as part of the tool set to help companies grow. Paul Mosin Sun, founder of New Spark and a longtime media buyer and marketing consultant, leads the effort to be your partner. Whether you are B2B, SaaS, or B2C, we have a solution for you. Come grow with us. Measurable. Affordable. AI bubble. That's my new word, by the way, AI-able. But, you know, I mean... How did you generate that? Yeah, so there's a... Well, there's a number of different tools I've used, but um, but this is an example of... Not that we're going to go into detail because of time, but there's, like, um, different... Um, like, this one here is called Flicky, for example, and I basically put in a script, right? And you can use images as well. It'll create those images. I decided not to as an option. I decided to use the videos from another tool, but um, but at least I let it put in like a script with different scenes. And that's Sarah. I'm using the same voice, but you can choose like different voices if you want. You know, like I'll go to all these people. Um, you know, and then you can have the, this what kind of style you want in the voice, right? Um, male or female. You know, I use, you know, and, and all those kinds of things. So it's a voice selection. And then um, and then you pick the style. You could even uh, pause it in here or just do a snippet. So I basically had it, you know, put the, uh, you know, it's always hard to figure out how to and let it pronounce SAS. It's like a hard thing to do or AI-able, but I did. And then, um, and then you, you know, you can adjust the speed for each section or the whole thing and the volume, and then you download it. And then I downloaded it, and then I put it on a, a video editing editing tool called Camtasia, which um, has um, connected with a tool that I have an annual subscription to a like Shutterstock, which connects to it, you know, in their tool from. Uh, and then I kind of align the uh, the script with the video that I wanted, you know. And again, we already have a music background, and and then I produced it and set it up and saved it on my hard drive and upload it to um, my website. So it's kind of like a, a mix of different tools together. Um, I mean, some tools like create their own video, you might like it, you know, you can certainly uh, like add a new scene, right? But, um, you know, but I uh, decided to um, just do the audio part. It was just, and it, it looks like there's this tool, it actually can write books. So I don't know, if you want to write a book, let's get started. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't tried that part yet. Um, but um, I guess if you want to be published, you can self-publish. Hey, Paul, did, anyway. did you leverage AI to write the script for that little video, or is that something that you had to come up with? Oh, I came out with that myself. I wrote the script. Here's here's one with a video here that I was experimenting with. So you could see 
um, how it worked with um, some, you know, with different voices. But you know, these. This is what I, I wrote this myself, obviously. But I separated because I wanted to have a different video or image with each portion. So not that it's any good, but um, generate more leads and sales. Ready to spend your marketing budget wisely? Ready to engage with a cutting edge marketing firm? You need NewSpark Consulting. That's right. Data driven demand generation programs. AI tools will build amazing content and ads. And that includes low cost lead magnets and ebooks. Who said you can't afford content development? Now you can. Yeah, did you see that? I said what? he said you can't afford my services, and they show this woman with a with a expensive jewelry. You know, that's what I'm saying. It takes some keywords and tries to find a video to match it up. That's why you got to like test them around a little bit. The right digital channels to reach the right audience. Plus, we build follow up emails and scripts that convert into prospects. More conversions mean more sales. And with the top notch tracking we do, we will answer the question: Did it work? Meet NewSpark founder Paul Mosenson. Proven, passionate, experienced, likable. Contact NewSpark Consulting today and let's grow like never before. How do you make it sound less machiney? Ready to generate more leads and. Yeah, well, that's where you have to experiment. They're not perfect, you know, with the speed. You know, you can take different things and speed them up or. But you're at the mercy of how the voices work and they're not totally perfect yet. Some tools are better than others. Like I like the one I use in the rephrase where they actually do presentations and um, and you can pick a like a like a background, right? And do a video. Again, putting in your scripts. Um, you know, I did like a few of these guys, like this guy. Um I basically, uh, what is this? Well, I think I used him, but I have to like, um, you know, pick, choose a script. And then, um, then you can, again, here, here's this woman, Brianna. You can pick the voice, pick the background, pick the, pick the person you want. You know, again, how do you want them easygoing, precise, expressive? Again, there's all these different formats, right? Uh, or male or female, and you can combine the picture, you know, the, the image with the voice. You can have a close up, you can have a medium close up. I mean, whatever you end up doing, and there's so many different ways to play with this stuff. And yeah, are you and cool. are you paying for the use of those images? No, no, come no, they come there, it's theirs, they come with the tool. So are you paying for like a, a, a lump uh, um, a monthly for the tool in this case? Uh, this one, yeah, this one I am paying for because um, for now, at least for the time being, until I finalize what videos I want. But um, and I can also use them in marketing and things like that. So um, see this one, you can have you can adjust text. You know, you can uh, upload media. Um, and this use a, a program called Pexels. I guess they have a a license thing with this. Um, stock company so that's how that works like what i'm paying they're probably paying them it's a percentage and does the fine does the fine print say that you have to maintain your membership in order to display that video no i haven't seen that i don't know so um no i don't go that detail with it um but um this is search images from unsplash it's another partner that they have and you have backgrounds if you wanted to choose um you know, various background in your video like I've done. There's also other kinds of like images if you want to do like a presentation and show arrows and things like that. Um, and then the music backgrounds, right? There's a lot to pick from. And then you just try to work on it and put it all together and make a, a, a training video with, a, with an avatar speaking with your presentation in the background. It takes a lot of work to do that, but in theory, you can do that. I mean, that's what Rephrase does. Here's another one here I've used in the past. I played around with called Leonardo, and um, that's more of a, a, a photo one. I tried to play around with you know with prompts in here with this as well, and 
this one actually didn't work. I tried to, you know, I once thriving small business now struggling to make ends meet as their profits dwindle. I don't know if I want to use somebody like this, but um, I experimented anyway. There's a lot of different ones I did here. Um, oh, this is my funny one with Donald Trump. I wanted to have him like, it looks like it's going to a rain today, but that was my little joke. Um, and then um, and then here's one with uh, a CEO and his right-hand man as a, as a salesperson. Because again, we were, this is where we wanted to sell sales coaching and sales management with the CEOs that were bonded together. So I created video, you know, images like that. Um, here's another one. There's some interesting ones here. If you wanted to like have a visual, you can put these through email or through websites or even LinkedIn pictures and, you know, have somebody like, you know, here's somebody who was, you know, fell in hopelessness and despair. They're looking out the window, you know, and you gotta, you can relate to those things. So again, it all depends on the prompt that you want to use um, and how you want to showcase somebody in pain. Like here's another one, like, like I wish, you know, we were growing and we're stagnant, you know, what can I do about it, right? So yes. it, it depends on how you experiment with it. Here's a confused website visitor doesn't know where to go in their website. You know, did you so, have to, did you tell it gender and race? Because I've noticed, the, you know, no, I haven't, white, but you can. White like, men, <laughs> it seems to be involved in it. So I just didn't I, know if you, if when you wrote the word CEO, if that just. I think it took oh. it automatically, but I think you can um, experiment with it. Like you want to try one, let's do one. You want to do a video prompt? Well, just, I was just more of like, I said, I was noticing the imagery and I just kind of, you know, I wonder where, you know, where kind of stereotypes and bias come in, in that right. as you're generating, like how much you have to kind of consciously counter that, you know, I said you had all these one CEO and every one of them was a male. Well, there are CEOs out there that are women, I right? Know, or, you're, but I think you can prompt stuff. that. Maybe it just depends on the assumption, I guess. But um, yeah, that's what I, I just didn't know if you were intentionally like, no, not at all. If you had told it that that's what you wanted or if it if it kind of has that presumption. No. Kind of built no. in and you've got to then be, as the creator, you're going to have to be consciously. Kind of un, you know, undoing that that. But I think each tool is different how it learns and uh, yeah, maybe it makes assumptions, but like, um, but, but I can, I can certainly change that. Like, let me ask you this. Like what, 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 what do you do, Linda? Uh, I'm a college and career strategist. So I work with <laughs> teens and young adults to tell their story effectively in college and job applications. Okay. So how about a, um, um, a high school female teen looking confused and um and stressed and, with a and stressed with a laptop or or writing their with writing a um, writing a college application you know, to <laughs> write an application i don't know i'm just doing this yeah so let's let's do the ideation and see what happens so then, you know, you get to pick on this tool, it's called Leonardo.ai. You get to pick uh, which one you like to look at first, and then it'll generate four images of that. Um, anyone you want to pick? There you go. <laughs> look at those eyebrows. <laughs> hey, Paul, what did you say the best, uh, or, or did you mention if one of these sites would create like a one page slick? Um, in PDF format with, you know, say, I don't know, X number of, of points you wanted to get across with gr color graphics? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's different tools. I mean, this I'm talking more of the writing and more of the AI versus I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. there may be tools out there. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you can certainly do an outline. Like if you went back to chat and said like, um, um Write a one page PDF on like just give me a topic. Cybersecurity. Well, cybersecurity um advantages. Advantages of cybersecurity. I don't know. To a small business. Let's see what it does. And then you okay. just copy, then you copy it to a word, and then you can always add some design or put it on Canva. Actually, what and is it? What was it? What was the last 
app. No, you, you can put you can put it on Canva, which will design. Uh, you know, you know Canva. No. Oh well, you guys should all have Canva. Yeah, Canva is for any kind of social media or graphics. That's a. I mean, that's it's got every, it's, it's got everything in here. You just put the copy in here, so you can just create anything you want. You know, basically with some templates or your own. You know, and then um, you just decide what you want to look for. You know, um, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but um, right. but theoretically, you know, you can create a flyer. You know. And then um, put all the elements in there. You can use all their stock photos, or you can use, you know, you can just copy and paste your your information. And you know, here this one looks good. I think I'll use this, but I can tweak it. You know, it's not really AI, but um, no, I get it. I get it. But all and, the and the and the end product is an image or a PDF. It, you can download anything you want. You can um, you can make it a uh, you can share it um you know as a jpeg or a pdf or an mp4 if you want but um you know but you can do anything you want with canva i would like definitely look into it as a compliment okay thank you uh, yeah but there is like i mean canva does have some ai tools as well and uh that's for another day um so um but yeah it kind of works together for the design part so it's all part of the tech stack as we call it Okay. I don't think there's anything else here. Oh, you want to have a, can I, you everybody have five more minutes? You want to see something fun? Sure. So this is a social selling thing with AI. Are you ready for this? Don't be nervous now. Okay. So let's say there's a category you want to target and you want to comment on. So what I do, I have about six of these. This is marketing. I actually have a folder of different LinkedIn searches by keyword category. Then I save it on my desktop and put it into a folder. So like this is based on the keyword marketing posts. And I look at all the posts in the last month. You can do the last week, right? And then if I find an article that I like, let's say like this one, for example, got 38 comments. And I think I want to save time. I have this um, plugin called AI, AI Assistant from ID, IDETA is the company. And I've got 88 credits to use in my tests. So maybe um, the topic looks good. Maybe I don't feel like reading it. <laughs> so, um, so, or if I do, how should I respond? So I, I ended up with this tool. There's a lot of things I can agree. This is a theme, disagree, love it thankful. And these are two that I made up, thought-provoking and interesting. So if I choose interesting, watch what it does. Interesting perspective on marketing and product dynamics. I believe a great product would certainly make marketing easier, but even the best product requires strategic promotion. Looking forward to reading your insights. It's a comment generator. With AI, right? So What's the uh, plugin called? It's from a company called IDETA, and uh, like I said, it's um, it's called their link. They have other tools too. I haven't played with them yet. This is just the LinkedIn AI assistant I found. Have you have you actually like read the article and kind of compared the like? Does the comment actually pull from the article? Yeah, a little bit. And then when I have, um, you know, sometimes the writers respond to me with good comments and I respond back. So at least it gives me a starting point of saving time. I know it's kind of a cheat, but um, <laughs> I'm just saying it exists. And you can always, you know, this is crazy, but with the options, you can also, um, you know, you can do, if you're paying for a four, you got 3.5 or four, um, you know, language. You, know, you can decide the length of your comment. Um, you can use hashtags if you want. If you want to ask, if you want to get more engagement, you might have to ring, bring this up and ask more questions in your prompts so that she can answer or he can answer back. You know, or if you don't want to do questions, then you just keep this thing low. It's pretty cool. And then you can talk about your goals and marketing in case you want to, it'll reference what you do sometimes. And then, um, and then here are the, here are the prompts that it puts in here, which is the category. And you can actually have different tones. So um, 
listen, I found this one. I'm not saying you should do it or not, but it's actually just for the cheat. It get, you know, it gives you saved messages too. Um, so you don't have to write things, you know, like, thanks for your message. You could book a date in my calendar. Here's my calendar. Like I put it in here. Um, thanks for being a connection. I hope we can engage and learn about each other's businesses. Perhaps we can plan a Zoom call with my calendar link. So instead of typing it all the time or whatever, I could just use this tool to put the message into a new connection. Um, great, let's plan a Zoom call with my calendar and get to know each other. So I just have different versions of it, right? Um, and there's some other notes you can put in here as well um, to engage with people. Um, I didn't really edit those at all. They were just here. Um, Here's another comment. Interesting points, Joe. It may be consider your topic from a different perspective. Comment. Fills it in. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, but that's what it does. Well, it's going to be amazing to see how this stuff in the next couple of years transforms everything. <laughs> there's tools coming in all the time. I have a, you know, a, a video tool that's making TV ads with your branding. It just takes a URL. Um, takes a logo and branding and keywords from your website, puts it into a, uh, a video um, template that you choose and combines it all together. And then you can tweak it and you have a, a you know, a 30 or a 60 second video or a TV ad. Mm -hmm. There's lots of stuff out there. There's, you know, these people are on, if you're on Facebook, they're already like, you know, buy our prompts. We have a thousand prompts for you. You know, to, you know, they just make money all. You know, it's really, I mean, the prompts, you can almost do anything, really, as you saw, you know, it's just using your head and thinking, you know, being open minded, you know, with the formats and the styles and then the personalization. I think you gave people a lot to think about and look into because there's it, it seems like there's, you know, hundreds of tools out there. So this is a good place to start. And um, we'll send out the slides to everyone so you can look more closely at that mm -hmm. prompt ideas and things that Paul included. And uh, if anyone has anything they generate from AI and you want to share it with this group, I'm happy to forward that along too. So if you come up with anything good and you want to share it, we can uh, send that out to everyone as well. So thanks, Paul, for your... You're welcome. Yeah. No, we're all, I'm still so, learning. There's nobody really an expert. They think, you know, but you just got to learn and test and mm -hmm. experiment really and see what works for you, um, you know, versus, you know, writing web copy, whatever it is, it, there, it's idea generation. Some, if you like it, tweak it with the personalization, you know, and yeah. make it, you know, by the way, a little sidebar, I just bought, you know, a, if you have anybody has WordPress, a little technical thing, I use a theme called Divi and there's a Divi AI theme from, and now I can like write web pages with my thoughts and then have with a topic and have the AI help write me web pages on my WordPress site. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, I just think I said even mine with college and, and job, I'm, I'm waiting to see how the colleges start responding to this in terms of how this may shake up how, you know, how they've been doing admissions and, and reviewing applications. Yeah. Because so many students are are turning to this to help with their writing. <laughs> One of the uh, funny things I, I told my daughter when we talked about this is they probably have a situation, you know, with college students using it is you can put a probably a prompt into chat GBT saying like, write it, write a page on this topic and include like two spelling errors and one grammar error. Right. <laughs> so then it'll do it, you know. Beacon is the premier executive networking organization serving the Mid-Atlantic region. To learn more, go to beaconforlife.org.